Hi guys, my name's Kevin Moore and I'm the host of The Moore Show. Now it's my purpose, my passion, my mission to help you guys become your greatest version. Now you might be looking to find answers on love, connecting with your life's purpose, reuniting with a loved one on the other side, discovering your past lives, or just helping you make sense in finding your direction. Now, as a multi-dimensional channel, I can connect with higher aspects of yourself to help you in this present moment to become your best version and live your most empowered life. Now, you can book myself for a reading by going to tmspsychics.com forward slash Kevin, or you can get a reading from one of my many gifted team of readers. The More Show Psychics, helping you transform your present moment to the most loving and happiest it can be. Now I also offer a full money back guarantee. So what have you got to lose? Empower your life today. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching The Moore Show and I'm your host, Kevin Moore. Now for the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Jeffrey Hoppy. Now Jeffrey is the founder and CEO of The Crimson Circle. Now in 1997, whilst on an airplane flight, a non-physical entity calling himself Tobias presented himself and began conversing with him. Since then, Jeffrey has been able to channel Tobias and bring forth his teaching information, as well as channeling other ascended masters including Adama St. Germain. Jeffrey Hoppy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, wonderful to be here with you. We're we're just uh, tickled with all the energy that's here today. Thank you, Kevin. It is a pleasure. I am blessed to have you both on. Now, uh, obviously, you've both come on by phone, and your your pictures and websites are coming up on the screen. But I'm going to interject some video in here as well, just to show your studio and to show what you guys are up to, because it's just absolutely amazing. You're a, an inspiration, both of you, to what is possible with this type of work. Um, now, obvious, obviously, you know, this is 2017. You know, it, 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 this, this has not just appeared. <laughs> this has taken time and a lot of love and effort to get to this, uh, this, this place. So b before we get into too much, I, I just want to get into your backstory as well, um, uh, Linda and Jeff. So um, obviously, now I, I believe it was 1997 that uh, you had your awakening as such. But what was your spiritual background, both of you? Let's start with Jeffrey first. Was there any sort of spirituality? Do you ever, hear, ever, ever heard of channeling prior to the 1997 incident? Uh, actually, um, I, I go back maybe two years prior, year and a half prior to that, uh, having no spiritual background prior to that. In about uh, late 1995, I, I got this really, it was a very strange sense that came over me. We were living in Dallas at the time, and it was, I describe it as a knocking at the door, and it was this constant feeling of, uh, it wasn't really anxiety, but it's just there was a knocking at the door, and I kept on wondering what it was and what it was, and uh, to make a long story short, um, uh, the, uh, a woman who was working for us, uh, we had a marketing consulting company in, in Dallas, uh, one day she brought in a whole box of books, because she knew I liked to read. And she had a bunch of books she was trying to get rid of and gave them to me. And uh, there must have been 30, 40 books in the box. And I was kind of rifling through them one night looking for something to read. And I saw one that was it was kind of all white cover with some foil, uh, gold foil stamp on it. And I looked at it and it said, Cry on the End Times. I thought, well, that sounds interesting. I didn't know if it was a novel or, or what it was. But I picked it up and started reading. And it was, of course, Lee Carroll's uh, first Cry on book. And uh, read about uh, 60 pages that night, had an amazing, unbelievable experience, uh, very transcendental. And uh, it, then uh, I had a series of experiences that happened right after that. I ended up writing a letter to e, uh, Lee Carroll, this kind of actually before email was popular. So I wrote him a letter, he replied, and we actually got to be really good friends um, uh, along the way. So I, I would say that was my, my real spiritual awakening at that point. 
And then, as you reference, in 1997, uh, I was on an airplane flight um, on a business trip, and um, just it was kind of early mid evening time, and I was just kind of waiting, you know, to get home. When suddenly uh, I heard a voice, very clear outside of me, not not an inner head voice, but a very clear voice, and it said, "I am Tobias. I'm here to work with you." And uh, I won't go into the whole rest of the story, but uh, I ended up channeling Tobias for about 10 years. It was truly amazing. So uh, I really didn't have any spiritual background, born and raised Catholic, uh, kind of lukewarm Catholic in the Midwest U.S., uh, but never really had an interest in religion or, or spirituality. So I'm I'm just going to get to Linda as well in a moment. So so no, yeah, no interest in spirituality or or religion. Um, how much did you fight this then when it was coming through? Well, actually, uh, when I, I worked with Tobias then for about a year and didn't tell anybody about it, not Linda or anybody, and he would regularly come in and talk to me. Usually on my drive home from work, it was a fairly long drive. And he took me through what I call spiritual basic training, and he taught me how to feel. He taught me what energy was. Uh, he, he was he was really amazing. There there were many many times, of course, where I thought it was just uh, me going a little crazy. Maybe maybe I was working too hard. But what I was learning from him was more than what I knew. I knew. In other words, this wasn't stuff that uh, my own brain could make up. And he was teaching me these phenomenal things. And uh, there was sometimes I get angry with him. He would tell me something that was so was beyond what I knew, and I'd ask him just to leave and not come back. Uh, for instance, one night he came in and said, um, when I was talking to him, he said, "By the way, you never go home. You know, meaning you don't you don't die and go to heaven." I was so upset about that because it blew any even rough thoughts I had about uh, life and death. And uh, I was angry and frustrated and uh, wondering what this was all about. But when I finally settled down, he came back in, I don't know, maybe a week later. And he said, no, you don't understand. It's not that you die and go back home into one great big uh, homogenous Borg. Uh, he said, home comes to you uh, and heaven comes to you. In other words, that you integrate the divinity into your own being as a sovereign being. And it, then it made so much sense. But um, finally, after a year of my basic training, I, I told Linda about it. And, um, well, she said, well, I'll, I'll let her uh, yeah. tell her story and that part of it. Okay. Well, he was very distant. We were working our brains out, and I just knew that, you know, it's okay. We're working hard. But I could was, had some concern that maybe we'd kind of drifted and, so can you imagine, and you know, all of a sudden he says, Linda, you know, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. And there was a funny energy around it. And then he said, I need to tell you about a friend. And then I'm like, oh, no, oh, my God. And so I was pretty stressed and, you know, concerned, not, you know, concerned. And then all of a sudden he, he tells me, he said, I need to tell you I'm, I'm getting messages. I've been, I have this friend, and basically it's an old dead Jew. And uh, Tobias. And so, quite honestly, I was rather relieved. That it wasn't a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so, but what was sweet about it was he approached me. Now, we've been married for quite a long time already by then. Yeah, yeah, almost 20 years, actually. Anyways, the interesting part was that he, um, I I knew him. I mean, I I knew what a passionate man he was, and I saw how vulnerable he was talking to me and i just knew that if i i had to try to honor that and to allow it and so we worked out a deal you know and he he invited me to you know he hadn't done any public channeling and uh agreed to do a channeling for me and in the process of that channeling he said you can ask me anything you want he said in fact ask me hard questions if you want so he, I watched him go into channel, and he was uncomfortable, but it, it was interesting to watch him do it. And then he started to channel Tobias, and it was so beyond anything I could have imagined. It was so sweet and clear and honest. And then, of course, I thought, you know, I had a little list of questions that I knew were hard questions, and and uh, I was so impressed because the answers that I that Tobias gave were so absolutely clear and unbiased that I, I immediately 
kept getting confirmation of the authenticity and have never second-guessed it. So it was pretty sweet. It was hard not to support something that, you know, here I've got this big, incredible six-foot-three husband that's incredibly vulnerable, opening himself up to, to all that is to be there in service to others. It was pretty touching. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, um, God, how, how, what did it do to your reality at the time? I mean, um, did it, you know, was it a big paradigm shift for you? Had you ever considered you know spirituality or anything like channeling that's a good question yes and no i was as a kid i was you know stuck had to go to catholic school and you know they talked about an all-loving god and then they start talking about babies can't be with god if they're not baptized i got to go to limbo and i there were so many contradictions to what i thought was god versus what what they said and then what they did so i was always tortured and angry and irritated about that but equally i always Myself, I had received messages from angels, you know, where I'd be there and I would just, it was there, but I couldn't tell anybody. And I would see things, but I couldn't tell anybody. And I never heard, and, and I had deep senses of what, what God would really be, what, the, what spirit would really be. And so what was profound for me was once Jeff started channeling, everything he said was not necessarily, quote, what you would call popular, but it was so clear to me that it was true and it was real, and that opened me up in a way I could have never imagined. So it was yeah. almost like I, 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 w- I didn't know it, but I was waiting for that kind of truth and that kind of beauty and expansion in my life, but I didn't know that's what it was. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, gu- I'm guessing in this lifetime, if we can class it as that, a human understanding, uh, that it was your, your time to, to, to have this special connection uh, with Tobias and, 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 and Jeffrey, and uh, to, to further your spiritual evolution and growth as well. Sure, and, and Jeff first. He's the best of the best. Yes, yes. Um, just sticking with yourself, Linda. I'm going to get to you, Jeffrey. Sorry about this, right? Um, just, uh, yeah. Um, what, what did it do, you know, did, did it shatter your world in the respects of, okay, you guys had this business that, you know, you, well, 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 Jeffrey did. You know, what, did, you, did you go through the kind of thinking, well, what are we going to do? Is this, you know, which way is our life going to go now? You know, it, nope. it, no, none of those. It was so cool and so easy yep. and, and not easy. But no, because, you know, Jeff and I had this, inc- we just had this incredible experience. He didn't, we didn't try to do it. He didn't try to set out to do it. We just kept doing, you know, I was running the little marketing business and he was working with this aviation company. And this just started happening on the side. We just started, it was like a hobby. And it was an allowing. Basically, you know, we allowed and there was like Jeff was, you know, I think saying earlier, there was a little local audience that got in, that heard about it, that some friends that got interested and, and then at one point it ended up on the internet. It went kind of viral, and it, it went for a, a couple years before uh, Jeff job thing all of a sudden changed. And at that point, we had people calling us asking us to do things. So it, I love it because we didn't try to do it; we allowed it. You allowed it, yeah. And it evolved, yeah. Yeah, you allowed it. Which and actually, you, yeah. go ahead. Sorry, to add to what Linda was saying. Uh, we had, in the mean, while, while all this was going on, we moved from Texas to Colorado for my job. Uh, I had an aviation startup business uh, with some partners, and we had a big investor out of Colorado, so we moved up here. And all the the Tobias stuff was kind of happening in the background. Mm-hmm. You know, it was getting bigger, but you know, it was still. You know, we were doing it from our living room, and then eventually moved to the little community hall down the street. Once a month. Yeah, once a month. And, but we never, ever, ever had aspirations no. of making it our work, ever. Um, it was just kind of a nice sideline thing. Something we liked. And, um, you know, like Linda said, we were both working hard. I, I was, we were doing everything with the aviation startup company, which ended up, by the way, being the company that developed Internet for airplanes. Uh, so wow. when you're on an airplane using your laptop or your iPad or whatever, that's, uh, that was our company. And uh, one day uh, I walked in and my, my boss uh, relieved me of my job, even though I was a founder. And it was so funny because it was such a sense of relief. Uh, it was hard, hard work. We were in the early stages of fundraising and technology development. And, um, you know, it was such a relief. I came home that day and Linda said, oh, I, th- I thought you'd left. Uh, you were going on a business trip. And I said, nope, I'm home. And she said, oh, well, 
when are you leaving? Meaning on the trip I was supposed to be going on, it's like, never. I'm <laughs> home. And, and, you know, we, had the, we were fortunate. We had the luxury of we didn't have to work or find something to do. And I literally thought, you know, I've been working since I was 16 years old. I'm going to take uh, six months off and just do nothing. And uh, But as Linda mentioned, then the phone started ringing. Wow. Oddly enough, I mean, out of the blue, people saying, do you guys do workshops? And oddly enough, the very second workshop we ever did was in, um, when it was in England. Wow. And it was, uh, we took a small group over. We went to North Stoke, if you know where that oh is. Oh, my gosh, yes, yes. Yeah, and we did a workshop, and there was uh, about maybe 20 people that came with us from the States, and there was about maybe 30 or 40 from uh, the North Stoke in the London area. And uh, we did a little touring. We went to um, Stonehenge, Glastonbury. We, uh, Glastonbury, and then ended up at Avebury uh, on 9-11, yeah. literally. And uh, that was a whole other experience. I won't even tell Our that first story. first international trip, that's where we ended up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and then we never stopped. We kept on getting calls. You know, would you come to uh, Korea and Japan and Australia and Brazil and uh, everywhere in Europe? It's so it, it just we were having trouble keeping up with it. <laughs> yeah, it was growing so That's fast. That's always been the problem. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh my god! And it's so inspiring to other people. Now everyone's journey is different, right? You know, I, I, I'm. Some people just getting into this channeling, um, you know, they, you know, they, they come into it from a perspective where you know, I suppose there's not a lot of money behind them and they're, they're um, you know, they're just doing their thing. They're just doing their best to, to, to do the work that they love to do and, and to get their message out there. But we're all on a unique individual course, aren't we? We're, none of us are on the same p- timeline or path. So we're all in, you know, you can't compare. That's my point. I'm sorry, I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, so, you know, someone that's starting out channeling now, listening to this, thinking, oh my God, you know, they, they've had it so easy in one sense, they could be thinking, right? Um, that's not the case, is it really? Because even though it sounds easy, I bet there was still a lot of, um, a lot that's gone into making it to doing, you know, to where you are now. You know, I, I wouldn't say it was easy, uh, but, but what was, what we really loved about it is we, we didn't have designs or plans right. to be traveling around no the world agenda. and doing this. We had no agenda. Uh, you know, we, we, I would suggest anybody that's thinking about doing this or any type of uh, spiritual work is uh, be in your absolute authenticity. I mean, just, um, you know, forget about what other people think of you or forget it even about the odds that are against you. Your be authentic mm-hmm. with what you're doing. Get out of your own way. Get out of your ego, but also get out of your limitations. Mm-hmm. And then be fearless. Uh, be absolutely fearless. But the Internet, I think, makes it easier to reach out to people. You oh, know, it, does. it does. I mean, that's yes. what grew up in the early days. But, it's, you know, the Internet gives you so much access. We have an audience from all over the world. It's and when I say be fearless, yeah. be yeah. fearless uh, you know, things have come up for us along this journey uh, that were literally life-changing. And, you know, they're overwhelming at first. And uh, as an example, uh, I channeled Tobias for 10 years, and I did it with my eyes closed, sitting on a in a chair, and, uh, you know, I, had, uh, I was fearful of being in front of groups, so sitting with my eyes closed was, was easier. And after 10 years with Tobias, he said, I'm leaving. Uh, he said, I'm reincarnating back to Earth. I'm not going to be channeling through you anymore. And, you know, it was one of those moments that Linda and I just said, okay, whatever, we'll just we'll be open to what comes next. We're not going to worry about the work or having a job or uh, any of that it is and what it is. you know we stepped out of our own way and the next thing we know is um uh, adama saint germain who we channel now came through and it was the next evolution we didn't know it at the time but it was a huge change um he had a different message he had me channel with my eyes open walking around the room doing things i would never do as a uh, never in my human <laughs> self and you know, there were times when I really wanted to run the other way because it was yes. um, uncomfortable. But, yes. uh, you know, we, we just said, okay, do this fearlessly. Um, we've had so many of those situations along the way, even in some of the messages that come through. They're not particularly popular uh, mm-hmm. with the New Age um, community. Um, there's certain New Age magazines that won't run our articles or even our ads, which is okay. But 
the messages aren't that popular because Adamus doesn't focus on conspiracies or aliens or any, any of the rest of that distractions, stuff. Distractions, he calls it distractions. Yeah, he says they're distractions. And, but we've, we've, we've done it fearlessly uh, and uh, gotten out of our, our own way. And every time we do, it's amazing to see what happens next. LandriaAnka.net and The More Show bring you this opportunity to change your life. Are you ready to go after your dream life? It's possible. I know because I did it. I'm Landria and I was an investment banker for 25 years and I was stressed out. I wasn't living the life that I dreamed of. I knew that people like us could create automated income and freedom online. And all I had to do was get trained. You can do the same thing. The result for me? I created that life and now I'm a professional award-winning author and I have a movie out and I do it for a living. You can do the same thing. You just have to be willing to learn. You can get free videos to find out about this. All you have to do is click on one of the buttons on this screen and you can go to landrianka.net slash KMS and those free videos will come straight to your inbox and you can learn more about creating the life that you desire. Don't wait another day to go after your dreams. The More Show connects personal development metaphysics and consciousness tools for transformation, empowerment and awakening. Please support this independent show so Kevin can continue to bring you the most inspiring and alternative interviews and videos. Go to www.themoreshow forward slash donate. You can also support The More Show through Patreon by going to www.patreon.com forward slash the More Show. Or you can make a quick and easy donation from PayPal using paypal at themoreshow.com. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, and I've seen you consciously channel as you walk around because we're just showing video footage on the uh, on the interview now. And um, I, I, I've got to say that's an art form in its own way because, you know, I, I've just like yourself, only been very happy with having my eyes closed and ha having your eyes open and that energy coming through, that's a lot of trust. That's a lot of getting yourself out of the way and being present and, you know, you know, trusting that everything's going to work out. And, wow, yeah, I, hats off to you, man. Hats off to you, really. Well, it's yeah. funny because uh, Adamus, you know, insists also on walking around the group, being very interactive with the audience, very interactive. Because he wasn't present. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a shock at first. It's like, oh, no, I want to... <laughs> Linda tells the story of uh, during the, the first full channel where Adamus told me to open my eyes. It was the wildest thing I'd ever seen. It was like, you know, you could... It was... Anybody that was there, if you wondered if Jeff channels or not, it was the most hysterical thing so he adamus wants his eyes open so it's like you can feel jeff is pressing his eyes shut and all of a sudden boom his eyes pop open and then boom they shut again it's like adamus is like no open your eyes and then boom the eyes open for and then boom they shut again <laughs> and jeff is wiggling and so it was it, he was very uncomfortable but the rest of us were very entertained by his struggle with adamus yeah you, you know it, that's a beautiful thing you see with your teachings the way i see it as well um my channeling told me this. Now, there's all different types of truth here, right? But my understanding mm -hmm. of channeling is a bit like a bit like a skyscraper, and all floors are equal. You know, the the ground floor is no, you know, no. It's, 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 it's as nice as the top or middle floor, yeah. And and you know, you're attracted to your soul groups, and your soul groups are from different levels. So you're from the same level as your soul groups from. So you may be on the third floor. That's where your soul groups coming from. So other groups from higher or lower floors aren't going to be coming to your floor because it's just you know, it's just that's where they're at. Um, right. Is that a kind of an analogy that you could kind of go with? Well, I, I'd say in the channeling that, that we do in particular, it's designed for a very, very specific audience. Yeah. Uh, Adamus actually occasionally runs people out. Uh, actually invites them to leave. If, just just yeah, leave. Yeah. If this doesn't work, you leave. Yeah, and it was kind of yeah. funny because Tobias was, you know, when I channeled with my eyes closed, he was kind of like the warm, loving, compassionate, almost like a grandfather. Uncle. He, yeah, he was here to let us know we're okay, yeah. that we're he not crazy himself. with all this. Uh, and, yes, we had a lot of wounds from the past, uh, and, uh, you know, the, those, those were just part of our experience. Um, but there was so much compassion with uh, Tobias. When Adamus came in, it was a whole different thing. He called himself Pro uh, Professor Adamus Saint-Germain. 
and I knew at the moment he said professor that things were changing. He was going to be lecturing. He was going to be somewhat of a taskmaster. But he explained that he was here for one thing and one thing only, at our request, at the for the request of the people who were choosing embodied enlightenment uh, in this lifetime. And he said, "I'm with you every step of the way." But uh, he said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna whap you upside the head when you get distracted with things, when you get off your true path." And he said, uh, "We're gonna focus on one thing: is the bringing in of the divinity or the light." into the physical mental reality and stay alive uh, he pointed out that so many of the ascended masters uh, of the past would have their enlightenment and then they die either instantly or within a short period because it's so hard to dis- sustain a-, a true level of light and vibration while you're in the physical body uh, when you uh, allow your enlightenment uh, it's it's so difficult to stay in the in in the physical world. You look at it's almost gray and lifeless compared to what you perceive through enlightenment. And you see people's energy games and feeding games and uh, war and and mm-hmm. st- hunger and everything else. It's really, really, really tough to stay because you realize also you have absolutely no fear of death mm-hmm. at that point of enlightenment and. Uh, Crossing over, going through death is as simple as uh, uh, Dhamma says. As simple as you know, uh, stepping out your front door. And he says birth is actually the hard one, but but he said, okay, there's a group that's going to stay here, and you want to stay in the physical body for a very very good reason. But you want to stay in that experience. And he said, I'm here to help you through that process after your awakening uh, and into your mastery. So Dhamma is not here. Uh, for, to help us in, in, go into awakening. Actually, Lee Carroll and Cryon do an amazing job with that, uh, people coming into their awakening. But Adama says, I'm going to be there after your awakening into your mastery, and it's going to be really tough at times. And, and that's what he's here for. Right, right. What is people's true path? And can I just add something to that? Is it doing what you love? Is, is that your true path? Um, yeah. it's, that's a hard one to answer uh, quickly, but there, there's so much to it. Ultimately, uh, everyone, no matter who they are, you know, where they live, how many lifetimes they've had, uh, everyone will come into their enlightenment. Um, different people have different what you call life purposes, uh, and some have no life purpose centered on spirituality or religion or enlightenment or anything. They're they're simply beings that are here to enjoy the experience of, of the planet and uh, being in this reality. Um, it's interesting, Adama says that this is a very unique environment, Earth, that it is uh, the planet, uh, he said, really only one true sense is pl- playing out. Uh, and don't think in terms of physical senses, but the sense in the ability to perceive reality. And he says that the sense that we're in on the planet Earth is a sense of focus. Uh, we're highly focused in time and space. We're focused in um, a very linear and a very limited reality, and we're very focused uh, due to gravity, both uh, physical and non-physical gravity. So it, it's a hell of an experience being in that intense focus, but eventually we we evolve, uh, we not evolve, but we move past that into back into our true multi-dimensional senses. Well, the focus and gravity are senses that cause us. That's basically the collaboration that creates what we call Earth and what we are. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, that's and and something that you really interesting that you mentioned earlier on as well, and I'm, I've got to get to it right, is that when you said about the distractions. So look, yeah, I mean, I used to be someone that was heavily into conspiracies, and you know, you won't find there's just I just don't do those type of interviews anymore. They're just lost leaders. There's never a solution. It's always fear right, based. Yeah. Always right, fear right. based. Where's the love and empowerment? Where, where's making your life better or anyone else's? Right. But you look at shows like Alex Jones or others. You know, fear sells. Fear sells, but then again, you have sure. to say to yourself, those souls are coming here to to do what they've come here to do. That they're living their passion, and they're as enlightened as the people they're surrounded by and the level that they're at. 
Yeah, and, and it's so easy to to get into distractions. I mean, there's a seduction to them, literally a seduction and a gravity to them, and they're a hell of an experience. But but you're absolutely right. They they're just they they spin and they go in circles and never really get anywhere. Uh, Adamus's take is that you know whether there are aliens trying to take over the planet or not is totally uh, regardless uh, a, about, about your enlightenment. Even worrying about the future of the planet, even taking care of the whales and the dolphins and the trees, is actually a distraction if you've made a commitment for your embodied enlightenment. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, for a lot of people, you know, to save the world, the planet, and the environment. That, that's a wonderful thing. But he says, once you're on this path from awakening into your mastery, it becomes a distraction. Trying to hold the energy for the planet is a distraction. He says that the greatest thing you can do for the planet is actually what you do for yourself, is to allow your enlightenment, because that brings a whole new level of what you would call light or consciousness to the planet that then creates a potential for other people. It's like, um, it's like illuminating potentials that people might not otherwise see. So it's not about going out and trying to preach any of this. You're simply uh, an illuminator. You, you, when you're with other people, you literally light up a potential they may have never seen within themselves. You don't have to say anything other than hello and goodbye, and your presence with them is going to make a difference. So, you know, what he calls all these distractions, uh, uh, you know, having to you know, drink certain holy waters or, um, you know, put crystals in your shoes or anything like that. He, he calls it machio, uh, which mm-hmm. is an a old Zen word for meaning spiritual mm-hmm. bullshit or spiritual distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost like a religion. Yeah, yeah, and, and he says actually the greatest amount of machio or distraction occurs right before your enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> it's like the seduction all comes in to say, are you really real about your uh, embodied enlightenment? You know, it's a funny thing, right? You know, there's other talk shows other than me that 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 do a lot of um, you know stuff on UFOlogy and you know coast to coast or the Jimmy Church show, whatever they are, right? Yeah, and yeah. Th- th- these guys right. are li- these guys are living their passion, right, by doing what they're doing, sure. right? But, you know, I said to myself the other day, right, if I do these type of shows, I'm going to get a lot more views and I'm going to get more money from it. But then, you know, even now thinking about it, I'm like, but hang on a minute, is that really, uh, why, why am I doing it for the views? Uh, I can't be doing that. You know, you know, it, it, that's ego getting in the way saying, I'm not good enough if I don't have these many views as other people do or I don't have as many, you know, you know subscribers. It's, it's actually about... Yeah, I'm more about enlightening than people. I am. I, I get you. I'm not. I'm not just trying to agree with you. I actually do agree with you, right? Um, yeah, but we we get so, we can get so distracted, and I'm just being honest about what I've been processing the past few days. Um, you know, the, a lot of these YouTubers with massive views, nothing wrong with it, right? But that that that's what they're supposed to be doing, aren't they? You cannot compare yourself. Right, right. You you can't. Uh, they're they're two no. totally different things, and. Uh, you know, Adama said early on when he came in talking to the group, he said, I don't care if it's just five of you sitting here in these chairs or 5,000 or 50,000. He said, I don't care if it's just five. Uh, the numbers aren't important. Uh, I'm here because uh, enough of you have raised your hand saying you really want uh, your embodied enlightenment. And literally, a lot of people that had been with us in the Tobias days literally left. Yeah. They didn't like Adamas. They they wanted um, Tobias to continue nurturing and coddling them. And here's Tobias in their face, or here's Adamus in their face, and uh, calling out the games and being rather actually obnoxious at times. You know, it, it, it still comes down to the allowing thing. In other words, we didn't, we, if we put stuff on YouTube or on the Internet, we do it to allow people access. I barely, rarely pay attention to the number of who watches, who found it, who who not. And I guess it's because of what Jeff was saying before about Adama so clearly channeling to, for us that it didn't matter how many. He only, only, only the people that were really there for that message would show up. Yes. And once you hear that kind of a message, then you really can kind of work free of thinking you have to have, quote, those numbers or anything. So it was really, really freeing. Oh yeah! Oh, do you know? Isn't it just so mentally freeing as well? Isn't it mentally freeing where you can get to that point? And, and happiness does not come from anything except for doing what you love. Then I'm go- well. That's how I would term it in mm-hmm. one sense. You know, uh, 
Yeah, right. I've I've had a little bit of that freeing experience this week. I really have, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, I feel mm. I re- I like a different person a little bit. Um, so, and yeah, God bless anyone that can get to that state. We can all get there. Do you know what I mean? It's just, you know, um, from what we're saying here, if it helps anyone, which I'm sure it will do, um, you know, that, that, yeah, but just flowing. And, that, and that's something you kept saying at the beginning of this interview. You just flowed. You just went, went with it. You know, you didn't, you, the, 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 was it the path of least resistance? You know, we, we went through quite a bit of changes in our life, but I, I wouldn't say any of them were overwhelming. You know, we, we, totally changed our, uh, you know, from the business environment we were in to, to this environment. But actually, I appreciate what we learned in business because it yes. allows us to run our business to sustain Crimson Circle, which is important. Monitor, manage Yeah, but, yeah. you know, our friends changed. Uh, or they, they left, actually, when we started doing this work. And, oh, you know, wow. even, even the connection with family and stuff, because they all thought that, you know, you're a bunch of weirdos. Uh, we're from big families, and nobody in either of our families can, they have no interest in what we do. There's seven kids in Jeff's family, ten in mine, and nobody cares. Oh, and right. it didn't really matter care. because, uh, you know, the, 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 the old friends that we had, they left. But, my gosh, the people we've met around the world, oh, my God. Uh, unbelievable. unbelievable. Uh, you know, and it was almost like leaving the old go so yes. the new could come in. Yes. And the people we've met, and we've traveled to 35 countries. Uh, I, you know, I don't know how many people we've, we've met along the way, but, you know, tens and tens of thousands. And some of the most amazing human beings that you'll ever meet amazing really really inspiring and actually we have friends that kind of know what we do they aren't necessarily involved in it but when the world gets kind of crazy they literally will call and say so linda or jeff you know <laughs> what are you seeing out there and we get to say oh my gosh you know you just have to know they're conscious humans all over they're not making a lot of noise but they're out there and oh, yes. they're like oh so good to know so good to know well you know me doing this show i get to meet a whole age group of people and you know at one point there was just you know i mean i'm 38 i have to think there um and you know there, there, there was a certain you age could be our baby yeah i could be right yeah <laughs> and there was a whole um, a whole uh, there's been a whole new age group of people coming into my show as well mm-hmm. and do you find that with yourselves that you know is it still the kind of 40 to 40 to 70 kind of students you're getting in or do you find that there's a younger age group age group coming into your teachings it was kind of funny after uh, when we were with Tobias, uh, you know, it was that older demographic that you're talking about. But when he left and Adamas came in, we all of a sudden, a lot of young people started coming in. They liked the brash, irreverent, kind of, uh, ir- irreverent style of, yeah, uh, of Adamas. Adamas. And they told us, yeah, we'd heard about the Crimson Circle when there was Tobias, but they you know, there was a bunch of old people. And they said, but Adamas, oh my gosh, he just rocks, you know, because yeah, yeah. he has such an attitude. Right. Um, and, and it's attracted more and more young people. They like their reverence. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's interesting. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing as well. There's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a shift going on right now. Definitely there is a shift, and that's great to see. Um, it, go, sorry, when Linda. they show up, they're incredible. Pa- they're really passionate, and I find it really inspiring when you do see more of these younger people showing up. It really inspires me. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And and one question I wanted to ask you both as well. Um, it, well, yeah, it kind of leading on for some of the questions that we were talking about. You know, it, you know, everyone that comes on my show has a different truth. That's fine. That's one thing my show of 700 interviews plus has taught me, right? Um, but it, I always question this one. You know, is it helping people or helping yourself? Are you being of service or should you be of service to yourself? We, we, or should you just go with what feels right? All of the above. Well, uh, well actually, uh, Adamus has a, uh, has a saying that it took me a little while to really understand, and the saying was, uh, only a master can be in service. Everyone else is but a servant. And I didn't understand it right away, but I came to understand that it, once you're a master, once you allow that, uh, that mastery, then you can be in service. For instance, Adamus is a master, and he is in total service to... Uh, to our group, to, to any, anybody who listens, because being in service, he doesn't care about the outcome. He, he has no agenda in the outcome. He, doesn't, right. he said, I'm going to present this material. Whether you allow enlightenment in this lifetime, I don't care. I don't keep track of the numbers. It doesn't matter to me. I'm simply here in service presenting this. 
And in doing so, he has such great love and compassion because mm-hmm. he's not all caught up in the outcome. You know, it, it doesn't matter to him. So he's really a master in service and loving it. And on the other hand, there are so many who are servants, you know, whether it's to a job or to a family or even to this kind of work. They, they end up being a servant to it, and they judge it by how many people come to their workshops or go to their website or buy their books or whatever. Well, yes. now you're a servant. You're not truly a master. And, and I think it was such a good lesson for Linda and I because actually it doesn't matter if, um, you know, nobody ever came to another workshop. I mean, Linda and I... Uh, we, we could, we could We're fine. retire, and We're so fine. we could just do nothing. <laughs> Actually, I've got a big book uh, that I've got to write, and it'd be so nice to have you know, a couple <laughs> years to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. But sure. Uh, so you know, it really doesn't matter. But a funny thing happens when when you're truly a master yes. and in service, then all of a sudden it all comes to you, and you don't. I mean, we work at it, meaning we have to get up and you know do emails and travel and the human stuff. It's yeah. so it just comes to us, and it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you very much for that, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, and just going back to the distractions, I know we're all over the place here, but it will make some coherent sense. Just going back to the distractions, you know, obviously, you know, Lee Carroll channels crying, and and and, and there's others that channel ET presence, like you know, Daryl Anker channels Bashar. Um, uh-huh. But but when they channel that, it's never really about you know the distractions of, of their channeling something that's alien. It's more about the teachings that come through, isn't it? So, so the, do, do you know what I mean? It, it, when we talk about distractions, I, I just want to clarify that for some people that may be scratching their head and thinking, well, it, is people that channel ET is a distraction? We're not saying that, are we? No, uh, but although I have to point out that Adamus does not like aliens. Oh, uh, right, he, right. Particularly, he does not like Palladians. Uh, he says they, they lie and, and uh, they, oh. they have an agenda. Right. Um, you know, basically his take on it, he, he, and he says, there is no being greater than a human being. Why would you look to an alien or an outside source for the answers that are already within you? Why would you rely on what an alien says when they've never walked in the shoes of a human and gone through, uh, you know, the, the extremes of being a human in, in, in gravity, in time and space, and in everything else? I mean, it's like being super compressed. Yes. So he's saying, guys, you already have the answers. Why do you keep looking to the ancients even? And he says, yeah, I have a lot of respect for, for the ancients, the, the, the ones who have come before us, but they didn't have the answers, whether it was the Lemurians or the Atlanteans. They didn't, they didn't have the answers. We're an evolution of them. And he says, so stop going back into the old and discover what's already within you. Um, and the same with aliens or, or any of that. He's very adamant about, even about himself, he says, you know, I'll guide you, but don't listen to me. I don't have your answers. I right. will show you that you have them, uh, but don't put me on a pedestal. That's beautiful. And, and he yep. does things in... He does things intentionally to piss people off just so they don't put him on a pedestal. No, but that's, or to be provocative, yeah. to make them look beyond. Right. Of course, Linda. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, that's very, very... I, I like what's being said there. Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Um, and I think the discernment in anything is love. Would you say, how much does it come from love? Oh, gosh, we don't want to get into that topic. Uh, that's, <laughs> wait, a funny, wait. that's a funny one. Can I one more? You know, I, I can tell you this as... Because I've been alongside Jeff this whole step of the way, and you know, and we've been guests at other things. Here's what I really adore and appreciate about, uh, about Adamus: that you know, so many times when I've been to spiritual things, you look at the audience; everybody's out of their bodies, off in the ethers, and it's almost like that experience is almost an experience of escapism, and you know, not wanting to deal with the human life. And in a way, Adamus does something that I find more um, supportive of the journey, he actually does what he does because he's saying, be present. To really open things up, you have to be present. Be here. Be, I exist. And that is the most, I think it's, I don't like the word empowering, but that's probably the most empowering thing you can do for yourself because that opens you up to more than escaping. Yes. And so I, I, I don't know that I stated that very clearly, but Anadamas always says his big thing is to say, you know, no, invariably people that have reached their enlightenment pop off the planet because they're so overwhelmed by it. 
his big thing is to try to invite people to say, can you, can you get to your enlightenment and stay? Can you imagine what that would be like if you would stay? And that's his big invitation is don't pop off, stay, and that that would that would create something. Well, well that's I a can't really important point, Linda. That's really because uh, we can get into suicide from that and everything. Do you know what I mean? Because some people that that mm-hmm. obviously kill themselves, you know, with suicide, they, they you know, it's so painful. Their lives are so so much mm-hmm. in pain. They want the pain to end, right? So let's just look at what you've said there in the sense of well, what does an enlightened life feel and look like compared to a non-enlightened life? Because that's what that's what the teachings are mm-hmm. in a sense. What, what what's the difference? How could right. you say what, what what would be the core thing? Oh, I don't. I don't even. I can't really say that because I don't. You know, it, it's more about this opening of consciousness and awareness than anything else. And to try for me to try to say any more than what I've already said would be I, I'm going to stumble as a human. Sure, Jeffy. Uh, I'll again? jump. I'll be happy to jump in. Thank you. Uh, so the actually, Adamus doesn't so much like the word enlightenment. No. He calls it realization. Yeah. And basically, you look at it that we're living in a very uh, limited spectrum of awareness. Uh, Intentionally, as I mentioned earlier, we're in this sense of focus. Uh, We we define our senses as being sight and sound and taste and that, but he says those are simply the mechanics. Uh, We're simply in a sense of focus, very, very limited. And what, what we're doing in realization is going beyond those limits um, so that we understand ourselves as being very multidimensional. Uh, we see, most humans see themselves as linear. They, they go from point A to point B to point C. They go from birth to death. But he's saying actually, you know, in realization, you're aware that uh, there, there really is no true time and space, although you can, you can put yourself into that, but yes. not limit yourself to it. Uh, and realization is um, going beyond that single sense of focus into uh, what, what are over 200,000 other senses. Uh, Adamus defines a sense as a way of perceiving reality. And he says, look at it this way, you're basically in one of your angelic senses right now, focus. And you've gotten more, it's working fine because you've got more and more focus, but Realization is expanding into the in, into at least a dozen of the other senses that that exist that are there right now. And in realization, you you suddenly start to you're you're aware of all the other realities that exist all right here and now, not out in outer space, but they're here right now. And you suddenly have so much more awareness. Um, the human awareness is actually very limited. Yeah. It's yeah. basically the you know what's what's in front of us. Uh, uh, the awareness of um, you know our name and what we do for a job and uh, that we're hungry. But uh, you basically expand your awareness, uh, and it's amazing. You become a sensual human being, and you start to realize how unsensual you were, how limited you were, how unfeeling you were, and. You, you open up a whole new world of sensuality while you stay in the human body. And it's it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, th- well thank you I'm very much. I'm glad you added that. Yeah, absolutely. Th- thank you both very much for that. Um, yeah, okay, we're 44 minutes in, and, and we've, we've, we've got about an hour in total here. So um, your website's been coming up on the screen, but for those listening on a podcast, your website is? Uh, it is www.crimsoncircle.com. It's real easy, crimsoncircle.com. Excellent. And we channel, uh, we work with, I should say, uh, the amazing, the illustrious Adamus Saint-Germain, or said in uh, the American style, uh, Adamus Saint-Germain. <laughs> and uh, um, he, he actually uh, had many, many lifetimes on Earth. His last lifetime was in the... 1700s. Uh, he traveled all throughout Europe. Uh, basically, had an affinity for France, but but he was all over Europe. He was a real being, and uh, you can read about him if you just do a web search on uh, Count Saint Germain. Uh, it was an amazing individual uh, who um, legendary. yeah legendary, and I think a lot of people know. Then the Ascended Master Saint Germain. Uh, there's been uh, there's a lot of channelers who channel Saint Germain. There's the I Am Foundation that uh, was started by Guy Ballard uh, back in the 20s or 30s. 
um, and he channeled St. Germain. So when when St. Germain came to us at the Crimson Circle, he said, I'm going to bring on the title of Adamus. Uh, and he said it's very unique in particular to the work that he does with the Crimson Circle. He doesn't want it uh, confused with the, the other St. Germain teachings. You could say it's an aspect of St. Germain. Uh, he takes on a, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it, he takes on a very specific personality just for Crimson Circle. That's and he's also <laughs> been very, very clear. He said, uh, he said, I don't want anybody else channeling me as Adama St. Germain because he has a very specific message. He's going to be here for a relatively short period of time. And he welcomes anybody to channel St. Germain. But uh, you could say um, he's staked out the territory for Adama St. Germain only, aspect, only yeah. through the Crimson Circle. Yeah. Okay, okay. And some, some people don't like that, and they're like, but, you know, Adama's made it very, very clear. Linda and I don't care one way or the other, because when we channeled Tobias, Tobias never had that uh, requirement, but when Adama mm-hmm. came in, he said, right. this is this is just through one channel. Yeah, it was not unexpected. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, because uh, obviously other people channel crying, and Lee Carroll, um, he actually brings them up on stage, don't he, the, the, the others that do it sure. sometimes. Uh, the same with the Seth sure. material. Um, you know, uh, Seth did say, I, I believe he, I believe this is written down somewhere, documented that, you know, Seth would only come through, you know... Uh, um, Jane Roberts. Yeah, 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 right. sorry, yeah. But of course, when they passed, there's other people channeling Seth now. And... Right. You know, I always say, well, okay, um, if they are, they are. And, and, you know, if it's coming from love and the, the, the information is empowering and it's, it's helping you, go with it. Go with it. Right. You know? Right. Um, um, but, yes, that, that's you, that, that he's mentioned that, that it's only through yourself right now. Um, just as – thank you for mentioning that, by the way. Um, just want to mention a few other things as well. Now, um, <laughs> For those of us, and because we've had to be a little bit brief here, but for those of us that are all about, you know, what if this is real, the what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, right? right? <laughs> what would you be your, your message to them? Um, it would be discerning. Uh, listen to it, and, and if, it, if it feels right, um, you know, that's, that's fine. If it doesn't, uh, do something else. Um, you know, you, there's, very, there's a very palpable energy that can be felt with any channeler, um, I've had the, the blessing of being on stage with uh, up to 12 channelers in front of an audience of 1,000 people at one time, and many other times just three or four of us together. I can feel the energy come in, and I can feel the energy change in the room. It's very, it's very noticeable. You don't have to ask yourself, well, is anything here? You're going to feel it on your skin. You're going to feel it in the air. You're going to feel it in every breath. And you know, uh, that's, that's the energy of consciousness and, and you could say spirit, um, and then you know it's real. Um, but there's the things that Amos says that, you know, if you don't like it, well, then don't, don't adapt it, you know, let it go. He says a lot of um, pretty it provocative... It needs to resonate. It yeah, needs to resonate. Yeah, he says a lot of provocative things. And, um, you know, it's, it's got to feel right. And the one thing I love about Adamus is he keeps saying over and over, you already have it within. I'm just going to help you realize it. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, he doesn't... Um, uh, That's beautiful. It, that is. Yeah. He's not trying to elicit followers, nor, or, or even if he was, Lyndon, I would run the other way. Um, it, it's, it's not about that. You know, when you hear a truth that rings true within you, you just know it. That's when, a, you, yeah. when you hear stuff that's macchio or false, it just yeah. has a weird feeling but when you hear truth it, it rings that's exactly what my channeling said to me as well it does not want to follow in and it actually told me when i first started channeling that it was i was going to bring other channels together and i thought what a load of rubbish do you know what i mean what is this coming through yeah, right yeah. now yeah but you know come all these years later i'm like oh shit uh you know it might have been a bit right with doing this documentary it just might have been right it might have been right so so um yes uh lots of self-doubt with me to begin with as well don't worry um I love what you've had to say as well, basically. And just very, I keep saying this, don't it, very briefly, but creating your reality, you know, how reality is created and how you create reality. I mean, is there something we can just briefly say about that? Well, yes, uh, but, but understand that reality is not singular. And that's, uh, I, I would, I'm going to kind of summarize and make it quick, but one of the great teachings uh, of Adamus that has rung very, very true was that, um, 
we're not really, uh, you're not trying to go from being an imperfect human to a perfect human or ascended master uh, because it's very linear. What you're allowing is what he calls the and, A-N-D, like and as in also. And uh, this is realization, is realizing that um, you're you're multiple. You you're the student and the master. You you are wealthy and you're poor. You are happy and you're sad. Uh, you suddenly start to realize, oh my God, I am this magnificent jewel with many facets to it. I don't have to be just one. I am the many. I, I can be having a bad day and a good day. You suddenly start to realize what um, true multidimensional living is. And to the mind, it's overwhelming. Well, how can I be happy and sad at the same time? But to the I am, to the soul, it's like, well, yeah, geez, you know, why would I ever be singular? Why would I ever just be uh, one thing? Then you also realize you're not on a journey from this long, long spiritual trek to try to improve yourself as a human. You're just here to allow that very multidimensional and uh, of yourself. Which is very freeing. I I am my present life, and I'm all the past lives, and they're all occurring right now at the same time. And, uh, you know, you you start to realize I am masculine and I am feminine. And that's one of those, oh, shit moments where you're like, why did I block myself with singular linear perception, thinking I was just a a middle-aged man, you know, uh, living in Colorado? All right, Linda's looking at me a little... (laughs) <laughs> more than middle age, but not not too bad. Uh, and you realize, no, I am the youth also, and yes. I exist in this time and space, and I exist in many different time and spaces. That's yes. Kevin. That's freedom. That, that is, freedom. is true freedom. Yes, and that realization. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, um, okay. Fine. I would very much suggest that if people are close by you, um, uh, because you're based in Colorado, Colorado, yep. United States you know, of America. If, if you get chance to get come to the studio, you feel drawn to do this. It's, it's going to be an amazing experience. I will just say that. Um, I know all your events because you're, you're you're doing quite a few events this year as well, aren't you? Yeah, we travel a lot, but we we do have a studio uh, in uh, down in town. Linda and I live up in the mountains, but. Uh, the theater holds about 70 people, and uh, last year we built uh, an addition onto it. It's kind of like a, we call it the, the Master's Club. It's a cafe with an amazing espresso Reception machine. And, uh, we have Social parties area. there and you know, socialize. And then over in the studio side, uh, you know, it's, the, um, it's all the cameras and the equipment yes. and a seating for about 70 people. And we have so much fun down there. I mean, it's it's really a blast. You go to our website, you can see the calendar for all the Louisville events. There's actually quite a few coming up. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And thank you for that. And uh, we'll get, we've been linking everything. Everything's linked in the description as well with all your social media links and website. Just very finally, final question for you both. Linda, I'll start with yourself. What would you say is the most important message for the audience in regards to, to the work that you're doing? Wow. I guess it would be... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to cheat and go back to Tobias. It's about... You have to love and trust yourself. Absolutely. So powerful. And, and Jeffrey, with yourself? Um, I, I'm going to go to Adamus, one of his recent, uh, what I call rants, uh, one of the things he's really pushing. You, you cannot work your way into enlightenment. You can only allow it. You can't study your way into it. You can't perfect yourself as a human being. You can't meditate your way into it. You can't diet uh, your way into it. Uh, those are all actually distractions. The only thing you can do is to allow it. It's Actually, you realize it's already there, but you've been so distracted, so caught up in your head, so caught up in your, your own doubts that you didn't realize it was right there. Uh, that true enlightenment takes no effort whatsoever. Or as Adama says sometimes, the master enters the temple with no effort. <laughs> you don't think about it. You don't effort it. You don't work at it. You are just there. And I think that's such an important message because so many people are still working at their enlightenment. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, just thank you both so, so much. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you guys towards the end of this year when I film the documentary that I'm going to do as well. So it's going to be beautiful to, to be in your presence. And I just want to say, uh, yeah, thank you for what you guys are doing in the world. It's, and, and, and may you keep shining that light. And uh, I, I look forward to, to catching you on another interview. And thank you, Kevin. We appreciate uh, you you. inviting us on your show. Thank you. Fun. Love your work. Well, we've come to an end on today's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews by going to the More Show's official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You can also find out more on all past and upcoming guests by going to themoreshow.com and do follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe. Amundsen, and I offer private channeled readings to help you to connect with your soul and your divine purpose. You see, it's so beautiful because what I'm offering is to help you to step into your empowerment and your inner teacher, your inner divinity. And this is such a beautiful experience because it's coming home to your true self. It's unveiling what already is you. And in this place, you can live in guidance, you can live in freedom, you can live in your authenticity. So if this calls to you, you can book a reading with me at morechoice.com forward slash Courtney. So thank you so much, and I hope that you join me soon.